What is up guys? So I did this presentation on Amazon Shopper Psychology at White Label Expo in London about a month ago, but I didn't get very good audio of this. So I'm gonna redo it in podcast format just for you guys, where we're gonna skip kind of the pleasantries of uh, you know who I am and everything like that. If you're seeing this, you probably know that uh, I'm the CEO of Kenji ROI. I've been doing this since 2016. So we'll just get straight into the good stuff. What we're gonna cover in this presentation is how to capture attention of Amazon shoppers, how to keep that attention until they complete the purchase, and then actionable steps that you can take to improve sales on your product listings. And this really is potentially the most important thing to success on Amazon because even if you're doing Amazon ads and all of these other fancy tactics, if you're not getting customers to click on your listing and you're not getting those customers on your listing to make a purchase, then you're going to be wasting a lot of money on ads and no one's buying your stuff, right? So we're going to dive a little bit into the psychology of shoppers. It's important to understand why people do or do not buy a product so that you can optimize it in a way where they are going to buy. So Amazon shoppers don't necessarily know why they buy things, right? A lot of it's subconscious. So when you're scanning Amazon looking for what's going to be the best product, you're not thinking out loud what your thought process is. You're probably just subconsciously like, eh, not that one, click on this one, or, oh, that caught my attention, let's click on this one. And so it's important to get inside the mind of the shoppers to know this even better than they know what they're doing themselves. So a lot of people make their decisions on a gut feeling. They're processing dozens of data points subconsciously, right? And there's different types of shoppers. There's a product expert versus someone who doesn't really know much about the product, especially technical products. Um, maybe someone, all they know is I need something that's gonna fix my toilet versus a professional plumber knows they need a very specific size and a specific type and a specific material and things like that. There's also readers versus visual shoppers. So visual shoppers are gonna pay a lot more attention to your product images. A lot of them don't even read the text. We know this because we see tons and tons of one-star reviews from people who just clearly didn't read the bullet points or the title or any other part of the listing because they would have seen the information that they're complaining about, right? But there are, especially a lot of the older demographic, they're much more readers. So long form text works a lot better with older demographics if, the, if that's your customer demographic. And there's also the insta buy versus compared to the death kind of shoppers. So people who just impulsively buy things like okay, good enough, add to cart, versus people who are comparing every little detail and they're gonna spend 10 minutes or longer just comparing between a few different products and price points and things like that, right? So you don't wanna exclude any of these customer types. Just because someone told you that product photography is the most important thing, that might be true for most of your customers, but then you would be excluding the readers too. So make sure you optimize your listing for all different types of these customers. Um, and especially when it comes to the product expert versus naive, you want to make sure that information the product expert is looking for, the very specific pieces of information are really easy to find, but it's not overwhelming. It's not complete gibberish to the naive customer. One little interesting tidbit. So this comes from a really popular study out there that visuals are processed 60,000 times faster in the brain than text. This is, this is crazy. To put this in context, it takes 13 milliseconds, so basically one-tenth of one second to process one image in the brain, and two seconds of viewing is equivalent to reading 30,000 words per minute. For some context, my reading speed is 400 words per minute, so that's ridiculously faster, right? There's just so much information you can take in when you're looking at an image. So let's just look at this one, for example. This is an image that Kenji ROI has produced for the customers, uh, for those listening on podcasts, I'm just explaining. There's just a very basic picture of someone with a grill glove on their hand. Their product is a grill glove and they're holding something really hot above a barbecue. But there's so much information in this image. You can see, okay, so the grill glove goes up the wrist a little bit, so it has some wrist protection. It clearly has some kind of rubber coating on the outside, so that's probably good for grip, okay. And clearly he's holding it right above this flame. So obviously it protects it from heat. So I can see that information out. He's holding something metal, which obviously metal things are really hot. So it protects heat from metal. Um, you can tell that it's a decently, you know, it's not a super thick material, but it's not super thin, right? You can tell a lot of information from this. It's black, right? It has branding on it. There's, I could go on and on for another 20, 30 pieces of information 
just from looking at this image. And I don't have to sit here and read through all the information that I just said to you guys. I can instantly just know that information visually, right? All of that information, if I looked at this image, I'd probably be able to tell all of that within a matter of two seconds. But it took me, what, 30, 40 seconds to explain all of that to you, right? And even longer if you're reading, right? So something to keep in mind there. The brain involved evolved with images, but language is something new. Written language is only about 5,000 years old, right? The common written languages, as far as ones that still exist today. And we have to learn it for years as a child, right? A five-year-old child, already been working on written language for a while, uh, they're, they're terrible at it. They need many years more practice before they're very confident at it. Whereas visuals are understood across languages. Even very young kids can understand information, and even if they're from a different language altogether, a Russian child can understand so much visual information from an American child, right? So the conclusion here is you should show all the key product info within just the images alone, but don't exclude the readers, guys, as well. The images are very important, but make sure you have good text information as well. So this is just a quick overview to what we're going to dive into as well, the triple optimize Amazon listing method. So this is three components, keyword optimization. Obviously, you need the right keywords for your Amazon listing. Persuasive desire optimization, which is just essentially the psychology of sales copywriting, but built into the listing. But the one we're going to really dive into now is called key info optimization. It's the most important out of the three, and it's optimizing your listing to include the key information about your product that your customer needs to make a buying decision. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a little bit here, but I want to talk quickly about how to capture attention of more Amazon shoppers. It doesn't matter how good your product page is if no one clicks on it because no one's going to see it, right? So you have to sell the click. Getting people to your listing is all about selling that click to them so that they will click on your product to see the other information, your other pictures, your A plus content, and all of that. So increasing your click-through rate by just 0.1% can translate into thousands of dollars per month every single month for as many months as you made that change to your click-through rate, right? So think, of, think about it like this. The search results page on Amazon is like a giant party full of single people. And you want to catch their attention because there's lots of attractive single people at this party and you want to stand out from the people. Right? It's all about being the best option relative to the competition. If you're the life of the party, if you came way more attractive than everybody else, you're going to get more attention from people at that party. Amazon search results are no different. So the information that shoppers decide to click on your listing is pretty limited. For most categories, they just see one image. They're only going to see your main image. Other categories, they can scroll through multiple images, but usually just your main image. And they're usually going to see the first um, maybe six or seven words of your title before Amazon will cut it off. And they're going to see the reviews and the price, right? That's all the information that they're looking at. And they have to decide if it's worth clicking on your product compared to the other products. So you have to hyper optimize those things. The main image is your visual first impression. And one mistake a lot of people make is that it's not clear what the product is just from the main image. It needs to be abundantly clear what it is. If it's from a top-down view, then your product shows up kind of two-dimensional. And sometimes it can be difficult to tell if it's actually that product or if it's not taking up the maximum amount of space. There should be the minimum amount of white space surrounding your product so that it shows up bigger on the search results page. And it needs to be communicated in a way, if your product is something a little bit more obscure, think about what angle can it take the product at or maybe what can I, you know, can I present the product in a certain way that is more obvious what it actually is? This kind of stuff really matters. So spending the time to think about that is really important. And it should strikingly stand out when it's compared next to the other options in the search results. Don't do the exact same thing everyone else is doing. You know, you should look at what's working and then use that as a guide, but you want to be different than the other options out there. Good lighting is a, an easy win. If all your competitors have kind of dull lighting, having really good studio lighting will make you stand out really easily. And the title, it's like your conversations that you're having at this party. It should explain what your product is very clearly 
and the key info about your product. This is not where you're trying to sell your product in the title. The title is all about having one, some keywords, which probably should exactly match also the name of your product, hopefully, so that people click on your product. People often jumble their titles up with describing information and benefits and things like that. You can save that for your other images and your bullet points and things like that. The title, you just have to sell the click. And the easiest way to sell the click is to make sure that someone knows that this product is what they're looking for. So a really quick example of what that might look like, uh, Amazon title template. So start, the beginning of your title should be your main search phrase and exact match. So if your main search phrase is um, large barbecue glove, then it should be exactly large barbecue glove. And then followed by your most important describing information. If it's black and it's um, you know, for men, then it should be black for men, two pack or whatever it is, right? And then maybe put your second main search phrase. It might be um, heat protecting gloves, for example. And then you can follow with a benefit if you'd like, if you'd like to go for a shorter title, no need to put any benefits in there, but this is just if you're going to fill out all of your space. And then maybe a third main search phrase at the very end where it's not as jumbly, right? So very important, you're putting the most important describing information at the very start of the title to sell the click to people. And also, I just got to make a mention about reviews and price. I'm not re really going to talk about that in, th in this uh, presentation, but reviews and price do matter. So the more and more positive reviews that you have, obviously, that's going to help you click through rate. And the better your price is compared to the competition, it's going to make your click through rate better. Now let's talk about how to keep that attention until they complete the purchase. So this is about conversion rate. They're already on your listing. They already clicked from the ad or the search results page. And now they just have to click the add to cart button. So this is all about your listing images, your bullet points, your description, your A plus content, your video, all that good stuff. One thing to keep in mind here, you as a brand owner have a skewed view of what's cool about your product. So this is really funny because I, I've talked to so many brand owners that think things about their product are cool and their customers care about it when they actually don't, right? No one cares that your water bottle can also be used as a paperweight. Yes, that's true, but that adds absolutely no value to 99.999% of the customers who might buy your product, right? Just because it can be a benefit doesn't mean that it is a benefit to your customers. So don't waste the attention spans on anything that's not the key info that's going to give your particular customer base the confidence that your product is the right one for them. And one of the easiest ways to give them that information is through the images. Like we said, visuals are processed 60,000 times faster than text. So a lot of the time we wanted to show things in the images. So we can obviously fill in the gaps with some infographics with some words on the images, but here are some ways you can show rather than have to make people read, right? Icons, right? Like an icon for GMO free. People understand that in an instant without having to read. Or, you know, stainless steel, or there's so many different icons you can put on there. Lifestyle images. So can you show an actual person interacting with your product? Like the example we showed earlier, so much visual information is just instantly communicated by showing a real person interacting with the product. And each image should be intentional and focused on showing a very specific piece of key information. This is a mistake that people commonly make is they get a model shoot and it's they have some beautiful images of the product, but there's not really any intention behind it. So the model is posing with the product in kind of random ways and the pictures all kind of show the same thing, right? You should be showing very specific actions happening that show a very specific piece of key information.